Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. Yeah, this is the Tiger Technicians Hour on the uh, 21st of uh, March, Tuesday. The uh, market was up. The Dow was up uh, about, uh, it went all the way to 32,593. And now it's at 32,475. A real quick 120 points down after the big gap up. Yep, gap up move. Now, this is going to be very interesting. What happens over the rest of the week? You see this Chapman Wave Inside Track propellant zone? It was a repellent zone in the weekly chart. Now it's a propellant zone. We held on the inside of it yesterday. Now we've popped out of it. Uh, this is going to be very important. Look at the weekly chart. So here we go to the S&P, SPX. Thanks. S&P right here. Same thing. I haven't done this. I did this in the charts I was showing you yesterday with the black background. But I'll do this again. There it is. Right there. So that we went below. We went right under it, fractionally under it. In this, these, these two lines represent very long-term trend lines. And for me, a trend line, I like to think of it as I'm going to the outer limit of the wick of the, of the candle. Could be the bar, could, could be the full candle, could be the wick. Doesn't matter, whatever it is. Just be very consistent in what you do. So you can see, in this case, it, it hits the top at 48.18. That's where we take it from the, the week of the 5th of January, the week of the 5th of January. And then we've got three points. Then all of a sudden you get four, five points, and then you get six, and then it breaks out. It just cannot get in. I like to make it a little like three sixteenths of an inch because that just tells you you've got to have a little wiggle room, right? You can have a straight line. I did that yesterday when I was showing this. I'll just do this very briefly now. All right, there. We go right here. Look at this. So, so we've got the the Dow, INDU. This is the daily chart. Look at that. Just a beautiful trend. One trend line, one technique. And then I double it up here because I want to have it as a track, as a kind of a a little trampoline, you've got to have some give on both sides. And look what happens. It goes in and then it comes out. Look at the S&P. This is a daily chart. Now, it happens to be the weekly chart that I was showing you. But, of course, it applies to the day because I took it from the highs, the January highs. Look at this out. And now it's really important. We are climbing out. And it's the S&P, if the Fed does something tomorrow that the market over a period of two days, that includes Wednesday and Thursday, likes – then what we're looking at is it's held and the MACD's cross positive. Look, every time the MACD's cross positive, it's been a good thing, but it doesn't necessarily have to last. But when it's on the, the final arch formation on the, on the right side, that's really good. Look at that breakout. Look at this. It attempted it. it did. Even that was a very nice move. So the yellow line is the one that says, hey, follow me because I've crossed positive in the black uh, on the black chart. That's a positive the red. 26 period exponential moving average on the nine period differential and the stochastics improving. Look at the QQQ. This is different altogether. It didn't even come back to test it. And three days ago, the green line appeared, which means that the nine period moving average is really important. I spent a lot of time about a year or so ago with Dave White. Um, he was fascinated by the nine uh, period moving average that I used. Uh, and, you know, he had this, uh, this terrific curiosity about things. He just wanted to know, because he always spoke about the 3 by 3 uh, This is uh, the Napoli, the 3 by 3 technique that he used over a moving average. And um, I, I said to you, you know, the 9, for me, the 9 exponential moving average, everything you talk about, I kind of see that. Now, I don't push forward. I wish I, could, I, I wish I could actually figure out how to push forward. I'd love to have an indicator that looks looks ahead in price and shows me the actual technique. Well, I don't. So um, he did that, and we spent a lot, we, months 
And he developed something he did very nicely, and he produced his own nine, he calls it the nine oscillator, and uh, did very great work with it. So now look at this. This is the, look at the IWM. The IWM, which is up 4.68, up 2.68, one of the better percentage gainers today, it's hugging. It's right inside the inside track. It's trying to create this cluster formation, like this cluster formation, like this cluster formation that spikes up out of it instead of breaking down. We'll see what happens there. Now, let's just go back to what I was looking at before. I want to get a couple of these things done and uh, just to explain to you some of the techniques that I like to use and why, why I think they are important. Look, there's the 200 period moving average in the daily chart, 200 period exponential moving average. Look how it's been a magnet for pr the price of the S&P to keep coming back to the 4,000 level. Over and over, it can go high, it can go low, it doesn't matter, it keeps coming back. So this time, making lower lows and lower highs in the channel, we're falling X formation. You see how you're making lower lows, lower highs, and much lower lows. At some point, the cup formation tries to form, and if that takes out, the, the upper resistance line sharply, you can get a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. I, I know we want to talk about that right now. That's just a technique. We, I haven't seen anything that says this is going to happen right now, but I do see that on the weekly chart, this inside track repellent zone making the 37, 3790 level, absolutely major support over the next, uh, oh, I'd say next week. All right. Um, I want to finish the others, QQQ, just real quickly. You can see, yes, the daily, very nice action in the falling X breakout to the upside, trying to form a cup formation. Oh, what happens tomorrow is going to be so important, so important in terms of whether or not the market is able to ignore the sudden spike to the downside that took out the key support. And now it's saying, Look, the MACD's good stochastics flat at 88%. I love that. That's what you look for. And you're way above the inside track repellent zone in the uh, weekly chart. It's now very much a propellant zone. So is the 14 period moving average and the 9 period moving average, which are both positive in the weekly. The MACD's positive stochastic and the uh, on balance volume are just saying mm, not great. But the monthly chart finally is starting to improve a lot. Let's go to the IWM. I just want to show you in the three time frames. Why? Because it's really important that we get some sense of what's working and what's not working. So, yes, the IWM is having a very nice session today. It's gapped up, still in the cluster formation until it can get start to trade in the 179 to 182 area. Um, this is going to be just a digester phase. And I just want to do this quickly. The SMHs, which are had a very big gap to the upside, and hit 257.37, now about two points lower at 255. But the 257.37 took out this left side high of 255.64 on February the 2nd. And you've got your cup formation, you have your falling axe. I, I must tell you, if, if I wasn't listening to all the news and looking at the financials, etc., I was just looking at these, these indicators, uh, stocks that I'm looking at right now, I'd be saying, wow, this is really, and you know what? Um, I'll talk about it in a moment because we have started a leg E in the, week, in the weekly chart because we broke to a new, a new recovery high. Isn't that interesting? So all of a sudden, the, 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 the market vector semiconductor once again has shown us that it can be a good indicator. I'll be back in a moment. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, so I was looking at the SMHs just a moment ago. Um, they are moving very well. They've come off a low. I mean, this is amazing. From about 161 back in October, we're looking at almost 100 points higher, 254. Um, and this is the greatest bear market in a long time. Well, it is. It depends where you are. And it isn't. It depends where you are. So a couple of things I want to look at here is, and in the den, uh, Shazam says, uh, yes, Basil, I made mind a while ago uh, that the SMH represented the most important tell because semis are the semi semiconon in the modern world, which necessarily... Uh, in my opinion, uh, made me acknowledge that they are the leaders to follow. So I watched the SMH and the SOXL, SOXS pair closely. Now, let me just speak to that. For quite some time now, I've spoken about the semiconductors um, as commodities. But over the last three years or so, more and more, I've become, to, I've, I, I've, my thinking hasn't changed but it's, it's become more refined in the sense that I'm looking at semiconductors now as the 21st century oil commodity. Oil had its day in the sun. Mm -mm. Excuse me. And it, from the, the whole of the 1900s and the early 2000s, 20, 2000, and the 2000s. And the chip con from the 19, I'd say 1970s, 1980s, Chips became more and more, just it, it isn't exponential. It is really like a rocket ship straight up in terms of the, the usage, the capacity, the everything about it. And they are essentially the drivers of the world economy, just as oil was for the 1900s. So because of that, it you've got to consider that it becomes commoditized. And then within that, there are industries in the semiconductor industry and I, I just wish uh, Dave White was here to be able to uh, elucidate a little bit more on this. But there are sectors within the industry that rotate through importance. But just like oil did, just like you had the variations of the oil, now what I'm looking at is oil in the 21st century will be, if I may use the term, refined to, to the sense that 
in, in the sense that some parts of oil will remain. You cannot get rid of it because you just have to have it. But the overall usage of oil will become lessened. And you've got batteries. You've got, you've got just so many different things going on. Uh, the, the whole solar as, aspect for us here in the Northeast, um, I mean, I'm in Boston. We had a fabulous winter. Well, that's for me because I'm, I, don't, I don't ski. And I used to years ago a little bit. Uh, but um, that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, yeah, I think this is – it suits me quite well. Of course, it won't suit my kids, but I, I'm just saying for right now, you've had a mild winter. So I'm looking at that, but in the actual marketplace itself, for so long, the semis have really led the market higher and they led the market. Remember in uh, last year when they started to stall? The whole economy stalled. And I've been saying for a long time, if you look at the semiconductor, since a, over a year ago, January of last year, 318.69, We've been in a recession, not just a, actually, in some cases, almost a depression for the semiconductor industry. Plummets to 160, gets almost cut in half, and now it's back again. So I think this is really important. Now, a couple of things I want you to just mention in terms of, uh, yeah, I could look at advanced micro devices. I don't want to do that right now, because this is a much better looking chart than it was just recently, it was trading in the 50s. It's trading in the 90s right now. It was once 164, plummets down to the 50s, gets cut by, by two-thirds. Let's just go just talk about NVIDIA. When I'm talking about this rotation in the sectors, look, NVIDIA has made a halfway comeback. It's up at the 350 level back in, I think it was November or so of 2021. And then it plummets down. Uh, let me just check exactly. I should have put that in after I talk about it enough. So NVIDIA right there. Yeah, November of 2021, it's 346.47. Uh, now, if I don't put that in, 346.47, Okay, so I would call that a tumble. Yeah, so arms, I, and I said in the day just a moment ago, I think you've got to look at the timing of everything. In this particular instance, wouldn't it be appropriate that we've made the high of the day in the, in the market? Because... This move up now, I'm not sure exactly what it was based on. Suited us fine because we are, we have a position in the three times long Dow, and we've taken a little bit off on the way up, something like six or seven percent in a couple of days. Fine, uh, take us up. Mind of mind, take us up. We'll come back again. And but the most important thing is that within the context of what I'm talking about, you can see that the, the, there's a sector rotation in Nvidia. I, it, from the chart, it's saying that it is appropriate for NVIDIA to rally right now because it's selling parts in sectors that need it the most. That's all. Let's keep it as simple as that. But wait a minute. Let's go to gold. Gold is now $29 lower at $19.53. In the Chapman methodology, I need to do this because I just have not done it for quite a while. I'm going to show you something. If I, I hope this is the chart. Yep, there it is. In the, now it's got it's got the Chapman wave uh, notation twice. I, I couldn't understand how on the earth did that had, it happened because it was on a slide. So the slide had the title, and then this particular slide that I used had the title again. So there it is twice. So in the Chapman wave methodology, from an identifiable low, we anticipate at least four four higher peaks, labeled peak A to peak D. Peak A, next higher peak gets B, next higher is C. Next high peak is D. This has got nothing to do with A to B equals C to D. Different technique completely. The, the ABC, different to the Elliott wave completely. Um, so just that the reason why I did this back in the late 1970s, early 80s, is because I want to differentiate myself from the Elliott wave, which at the time I didn't really, I couldn't quite understand it. I've got a much better feeling for it now, <clears throat> but there, there are still things that are a little elusive. I have an expert that I refer to uh, out in Cape Cod, and, and he's 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 the best uh, Elliott Wave person I have uh, pr pretty much ever come across. Um, he did meet Pratt and all these people, so he really knows his oats. P, E, F, and G. It never goes to an H. Add D. Other things can happen. Well, lo and behold, what do we have right here? We got a buy, a buy mode that went to a P D. 
This is like a rogue wave where the technicals were all weak and it spirals up the beginning of February and it goes to the, this is a continuous contract, so it goes to about the 1960s and it plummets down. Under the 200 period moving average, it makes an H pattern which becomes a beautiful cup formation and then it screams up to peak A, peak B, peak C, and now we've got a potential peak D. This is where I'm suspecting that the financials, this is going to tell us, remember, I like to think of gold as the um, the go-to place when there are geopolitical, financial geopolitical tensions around the world. Gold gets the benefit. So if gold gets the benefit and it's in peak D in the daily and it's now in leg D in the weekly, if the XLF, now this is going to be interesting, I almost took a chance today and then I thought, I don't want to take chances. I want to get some kind of trend. There's enough room. If we get a real turnaround in the XLF, you can do something. But this doesn't look good at all. This is a financial a financial spider fund. It's up 67 cents today. I'll be back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So, uh, let, let me, I've got Amazon here. Questions about this. Nothing to do right now because Amazon's kind of stuck in a rut. We'll be back to it. I want you to show you. Look, silver <clears throat> is actually holding quite well, down 11 at 22.53, playing catch up to gold. But I suspect that the whole move with gold has been the financial crisis that's ongoing. Therefore, I'm not sure that gold although it's a peak D in the daily and could be in the weekly if there's a lower high next week, I think it's still in play because this is not going away. It's not like it's going to be resolve, going to resolve itself. Now, I, I'll talk about it another time. I don't waste, waste time right now.
But are they saying, you know, I spoke about this a long time ago. I said, so Madoff, all those people get their money back? This is, uh, are we setting a precedent now that when the stock market crashes, everybody gets their money back? I said that almost, it was like a quip. It was not necessary. It was one of those tongue in cheek, semi, semi serious, semi joking things. And then, and I spoke about it in terms of the age that we're in, the pampering of, of youth, the pampering of, and I'm not blaming them. We've done it. It's just, it happens. These things unfold as a natural consequence of, of, of comfortability, which is what happens when the market goes up for a long period of time. So, um, so in a sense, nobody's going to be ready for anything really serious that comes about in the economies. Um, and that's, that to me is, is something that uh, is quite frightening, actually. So now what is the Fed going to do? What, what, what is Janet Yellen going to say? Is she going to say, oh, we're going to do it very selectively, but every time we're under pressure politically, and we are, an, we are not a political force under any condition. We are the Fed, and we are the, we are the, uh, we are the, the brokers of the best interest of, of the public. So don't even think of us thinking politically and in terms of uh, being uh, secretary of the finances. Um, well, all I can say is that the pressure put to bear forces these people to do things that normally they would never do in their own lives. I mean, would they uh, guarantee everybody's money back no matter what it is? So we're in that stage. This is a stage that's just it's been evolving uh, surreptitiously, well, for those who are not looking at surreptitiously, for those who are looking, it's been very, very obvious. So here we are. We're finally there. So the, what I'm saying is that the financial sector, look at gold. Uh, and then gold works its own way through different other, other reasons. It starts to move up. But that to me was important. Is it going to tell us if, if gold, I may as well go back to it, if gold slides from the high that was made just over 2000, it's now 1955, if it gets back to 1880, I would have to say that the, the, the market is suggesting to itself that the crisis, the real crisis for the banking index or the bank sector uh, isn't over, but it's set aside. Okay, just let's put it that way. Now, I just wanted to show you high-grade copper had a very nice rally yesterday, another right, nice rally today, but it's all in the lower range. Look at... Um, where did I want to go? I wanted to go to U.S. bonds. Wow, look at this. Bonds pulling back again, made that peak E right at the 200 Chapman wave. And look, this inside track, oh, I didn't view it as an inside track. Resistance level, when just above it, couldn't hold it, plus the 200 period. It had all these things going against it at the 200 period moving average. And now the bonds are pulling back. It means that yields are uh, running a little bit. But I think... Right now, it's not so much the, the yields that we're looking at because they stuck in a range. Let's see what the Fed says and how that impacts the market. Crude oil. Crude oil is having a bit of a bounce today. It's up a dollar at 68.82. Remember I said in my patterns, this is what I'd be looking at. This full, I made this a pink rectangle, and I said I would go to this long sideways rectangle high, and I'd go down. So that takes us to about the 64 to 60 area as support. We went down to the 64, trying to rally now. It might, the on-balance volume made a nice V-shaped pattern. The stochastic's trying to turn up. The MACD, oh, it's improving just a little bit, but it's really uh, very ugly. So it says any bounce in, in oil at this point should have a lot of testing of support levels as it moves up. Maybe it's one strong step higher and two small steps step back. But if it's able to keep doing that, then it can get to the 70 to 72 strong resistance areas over the next week or so. I did one other thing. Oh, VIX index. And here's the VIX. So the VIX index has come down very sharply under the 200 period moving average, down $1.91. And this just is saying, hey, it might not be all clear, but the, the participation of fund managers buying on weakness in the market has sort of being curtailed. All right, enough with that. I did want to show you this. You know, I got an expression. A long, narrow rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Well, lo and behold, we were, let me just go back there. We were in this, look at this, almost two hours. We were trading between 40.19 and the E-mini, one-minute chart. 
and 4014 was the base. It went to a peak ABCD, within that, pulls back. Went to a peak ABC minus, and went to a lower low, then all of these lows for about an hour, and then it went peak ABCD, pulls back, EF. Then it went to the midpoint. Remember, I like to draw the midpoint. The mid I don't want to show it now because I'd have to do something to show it. But we had that big blue midpoint from a couple of weeks ago that we tested yesterday. Perfect. I'll show it in the 10-minute uh, chart. And then we spiked up to peak G. Pull back, pulls back. And then after G, there's never an H. So I, I was trying to figure out what it was. But when, when you get a move like this once in a while after 8.30 to about the open 9.30 or even 10, you can get an isolated spike in the one-minute chart that fails. I, I must say, everything about this looked like it was a D, E, or F. I, was a, I did actually go short, uh, but then I had to cover it because I was about to do my show, and I, I just didn't even have a chance to change the stop. I just got out of it. And then, and now it's trading. Uh, I, I got short about, I can't even remember now. Uh, I don't remember what the price was, 40, 40, 25, I think it was, something like that. Anyway, and here we are at 40.009. But the 10-minute chart made an emphatic peak G with the, with the MACD much weaker and the stochastic much weaker than it was at that doji candle peak D at the 161 expansion. So this is really important, and for the moment that it's a 10-minute chart, so it's just crossing over now to negative, and that says you got to be careful right now. As I said before, we might have made the days high. It could even be the next 24 hours, while tomorrow um, at this time, uh, the market is kind of waiting to see what the Fed says. All right, with that said, now I can get back to some things that I was asked about. Look, Amazon... Look at that. It, it, from the low that was made at 81.43 back on January the 6th, it spiraled up to where? To a, a, Look at this. Island reversal touches the, uh, uh, what was that? I, I call it, was that a 300%? I think it was. 100% uh, expansion. And then what happens is island uh, at the 200 period moving average resistance, it pulls back, makes an island reversal, and that means it leaves a gap, goes to the mainland, comes all the way back down, goes to the 89-ish um, area, 88, 89, spikes. Now the question is, what about Amazon? And I'm just going to say, I think Amazon has made a low because it is such a complex vehicle. I'm going to call it not the low at 81.43, but a low. And I don't know whether it's going to come back. That's the internal low. Now the residual lows, where does it make? Was that the residual low six days ago? I'm not sure. I'll talk about it in a moment, and I'll tell you what I'd be looking for in Amazon. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. With, uh, Dow's up 233, SP's up 30. So we're looking at Amazon trading up a dollar at 98.80 and 90. From the way I'm looking at it, the way it came down from spiking to 115 down to um, 88, that was, it took time. It was, it was price, but it was more time than price. And then a big spike up, and now it's trying to hold that. It just says to me that Amazon is, is in the throes of, of, of a big digestive phase that is undergoing the first signs of finding support and new buyers. So the way I'm looking at it, I think I'm looking at fresh buyers in the move that was up. And I also got the feeling from just looking at the way the on-balance volume acted that a lot of them either didn't add to this on the position down, they actually got out. And now it has to find new buyers. I would be much more impressed if, I, if you're already in Amazon, I think uh, you are in the uh, coda. Um, I would be adding to the position because if it can, over the next two days or three days, if it's able to, it means the market's doing okay. If it's able to close above 100.99, it gets into the 101s, I would then add to that position. I would just hold it for the moment because it's still in this choppy sideways phase. Uh, so that's that. And Airbnb was a question came up. I, I love, I've never actually stayed in Airbnb, but from what people tell me, um, some people have had, really good success and other people yeah it's okay airbnb abnb trading it up 352 at 121.92 it's almost the same pattern as amazon but here i've got a completely different pattern in the weekly chart you had that arch formation that has become a cup formation i think airbnb is out of the two airb at 121.92 if it's able to get to 131 in the next week, it's at 120, so that's 10 points. I'll even give it more. I'll say in March, without closing under 109, if it's able to get to 131, no, without closing under 115, the 200 period moving average, if it can get to 100, in fact, even if it can get to 100 days high as 100, round number open, hmm, 120, round number, 122.98 was the high. Yes, if it can get to 100 and... 23.13 just needs to get into the 123s. I'd say that to me is is a little better chart, especially going to the summer. Next question came in, which was I probably have I've missed a whole bunch of questions. No, I haven't. Um, intermediate term. Oh, intermediate term on uh, Airbnb. <clears throat> You see this rectangle that I'm about to draw in the weekly chart? I can do it in the daily, but I'm going to just stick to the weekly chart. It, I'm even not going to go to the high. I'm going to go there, and I'm going to go to the low of the, of the big candle from uh, about five weeks ago that went from about 109 to the 140s. I'm going to say to you that if Airbnb 
with a nine period moving average way over the 14 in the weekly. The MACD good, stochastics, eh, eh, 62%, okay, not so great. But the on balance volume is good. I'm going to suggest to you that this on the intermediate term, me intermediate term says that I've got to be looking at six to eight weeks. I would say in six to eight weeks, there's a good chance that um, Airbnb at least has an attempt, is at 117, uh, 122 right now. It has an attempt to hit the 130, uh, 129 to 131 area. I like, I, that's the way I'm looking at it right now. Next question, okay. Um, okay, got that, got that, got that. Oh, where can I add to uh, the SCO? SCO is, ah, this is different. SCO is the uh, ProShares Ultra Short. You know, I think that oil has done a huge chunk of what I was looking at. And I would not. This goes with the semiconductors. I think a chunk of this whole, uh, we the weakness that we've been looking at in the economy, I think almost two thirds of it is already underway, done. I think we're into the, the, the final stages. So that just says to me that crude oil doesn't have to go down much from here. Uh, 65, 60, 64 to 62, I'd even say to 60, I would consider that really good support. Uh, more importantly, it could go sideways, could go back into the rectangle, just a momentary outsider going outside, out of the, the band, and it goes back into the band in the 74, 75 A. I'm not sure right now, maybe I'll have a different opinion in a few days' time, but my opinion right now is that I would not be looking at the short side. Would I be looking at the long side? I thought about that last night. I thought, you know, I love the candle that was formed in, in the continuous contract yesterday. That's the Chapman Wave Roman candle. If we close nicely above it and the on balance volume, it makes a nice V shape, which it's doing. I think there could be a bounce. So I'd be rather looking at the bounce side of oil. I'm not bullish or anything. I'm just saying a bounce and then it goes back into a trading lane. Next question is, let me just find that. Uh, Basil. Oh, <laughs> Shazam says, Basil, thanks for buttressing my often lonely decision. Read the semis. You're spot on, plain and simple. Semis are in everything. Everything. It's like, uh, I mean, like crude oil still is almost in everything, but that's changing. Um, Yellen, U.S. financial system is safest and most liquid in the world. Yeah, that, you know, thanks to that. I, I you know, she's part of the administration, she's been part of administrations for a long time. The same way as I, with the guy who wrote that book, that guy from the New York Times, when I heard him at this, at this, he was the guest speaker where I was recently. Um, I was going to go up and speak to him, and then I thought, oh, maybe I'll invite him and, and interview him on my show. And then I thought, you know, from everything he's saying, his bias is married to Janet Yen. He's known her so long. He's empathetic. He's a... Uh, and he's, he's an economics reporter, and I know he's doing his best job, but I can see a bias. I, he didn't say anything very negative about her at all, and I, I think there have been things that she's done poorly and the things that she's done well. I mean, just I just want both sides. That's all I want. Um, okay. Uh, well, let me just see. Uh, uh, questions coming in, questions coming in. Guess you know, okay, yep. Oh, question came. Okay, uh, um, where did it go? Oh, it's on the other one. Um, oh, in my email, FXI, FXI is the, um, this is the Chinese, remember I said the iShares China large cap ETF, I'd be ignoring it right now, I think I'm getting ready within about a week or two to say, hey, now it's going to have a decent balance, but right now, I think it's had its, like, it's had its spectacular move, going from the 21 area all the way to 33, and then back down to 27, I watch it closely. It's telling us a lot. Um, next question came in here. Let's see. Yeah, so, so Paul says, it's hard to believe Amazon has no earnings. Well, if you remember in the very beginning, uh, Bezos just pushed every single penny that I, at least from the way I understood it, back into the company. And I'm, I'm just, I ordered something yesterday. I just ran out, out of ink and I was going to go over to, to the CVS or Staples and get ink. And I thought, ah, I'll just do it again like it did recently. 
um, ink and something else I wanted. Uh, it was here this morning. Last night, I ordered it. it was here this morning. I mean, he, he produced, he's changed the way things are sold forever. I'll be back. We'll be looking for the last section. What are we looking at for the rest of the day? I'll be back in a moment. With you. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, let me just run this real quick. I'm going backwards. The UNG, I don't think it's quite ready. Today's low is 716. The low of uh, February was 714. How we come out of this is going to be really important in the next few days. If it can get to 8.20, by Friday or Monday, I think we've made a low that's a very important. Not the major low, but the daily says that's a low. But right now, I looked at it last night and I thought, just I've got to give it a little more time. Uh, and Pat, my um, my silver chart is in leg B and SLV, uh, which I am using as a benchmark to confirm, also is at a peak B right now. So not not a C. That I didn't my my work didn't give that little hiccup that you might have in yours about six days ago. PRQR, P, uh, P, oh, oh, PRQR, I think that's what it was. Yeah, beautiful move. Congratulations, Dan's up 12% today, 358, up 40 cents. I've got this as a leg F. It actually could be a brand new leg B, the way the MACD and Stochastic are acting. And the weekly chart, if it goes higher, if it goes into the three, I, don't know, I can't do it offhand, but if it goes into the 370 area, I, 
Is that a B or is that an alternate count? But either way, this is really good action. It makes 340 to 315, very strong support. What was the final one that I wanted to do? Oh, quickly, quickly, quickly. Uh, PRQR, PRQ. Oh, UNG. I think I did UNG. Yes, I did. Um, so that's what I'd be looking at, UNG. Okay, here we go. So as I'm looking at it today, I think that we've made an intraday high. It might even be a high through tomorrow morning. Uh, look, here's your PG right there, the high of 4,031.50 in the E-mini 10-minute chart. And I had said 4,008 is key to watch. We're at 4,010. We've gone just a tad below it. I'm going to put it this way. If there is a close below 4,000 after 2 o'clock this afternoon, then we could start to see a little bit more of a sell-off with uncertainty going in tomorrow. But a lot of what we're looking at is already unfolded. The, the gold is pulled back as the financials are trying to establish something. So the Fed might just give us a little bit of hope for the market to at least feel, phew, 